How's it going everybody? It's Aparicio and today I'm going to be breaking down my DaVinci Resolve color grading workflow. Let's make this super simple for you guys and hopefully after this video grading in DaVinci makes a little more sense. So with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so here's the shot and here is the node tree. It's shot on a red camera. All right, so I'm just going to walk you through what I did. We're just going to go ahead and put our CSTs on, CST and CST out and I went ahead and put these inputs, uh, input color space, input gamma, output color space, output gamma, and here is my color space transform out, and my output color space is rec 709, output gamma, gamma 2.2. Okay, so before the CST, I put a noise reduction node to take away mostly chroma noise. You, you won't be able to see it, but it was a tiny bit. All right, and now we have this image here, and now we're going to be going in this section right here. These are our primary corrections, okay? It's super simple. But what I wanted to do is just get this shot to the most neutral looking base to work off of. Just a clean, neutral base, nothing dramatic going on. So let's go to the exposure node, turn that on. I just did this in my lift, gamma, and gain. I just adjusted them slightly, opened the image up, and for this, I had my waveform open on my scopes. And then let's go to balance. All right, guys, balance. It's looking a little red. I brought it down. It seems like it's cloudy out and uh, there's a mood going. So I leaned more towards the cooler side just to stay realistic. And I think it came out good. And I just used my offset here and some color bars. For the balance, I had my vector scope open. And then I'm gonna turn on my contrast node and let me turn that off, turn it back on. All I did was use my custom curves. It was super simple. I put on editable splines and if you click it, you can see I made a, just a simple S curve, nothing crazy going on in my contrast node. Super simple, it's crazy. For the contrast, I had the waveform open, all right? And then let's turn on the saturation node and I just toned it back a little bit. It was looking a little too strong. And for saturation, I had my vector scope open. So now my secondary corrections right here. First thing I noticed, I was like that red right there is a little too bright and saturated. So let's turn this node on. And now you can see I used a parallel kind of structure here, uh, just so this is all working off this nice clean primary corrected base. And it just blends better together. So off on and I just desaturated it just so it blends more in with the jacket and the background and I selected it with my qualifier and I turned down the saturation here in the color slice tool all right and then I uh, put the density up a bit so now let's move on to the jacket I just kind of brought it to where the shirt was I brought it down a bit I just selected it with the hue versus sat and I brought the saturation up a little bit just so it seemed even, and we could have a nice red and green color separation going on. Now let's go to Shadow HDR. I just pretty much manipulated my shadows in my HDR wheels, and I used the dark HDR wheels here, as you can see. In this shot, I didn't mind if the, the very black blacks were crushed. Uh, I just think it looks better like that. More dramatic, I like it. And I used HDR for its very precise selection of Okay, now let's go to skin. Pretty much what I did is, is I used my hue versus hue just because I'm making the tiniest adjustment and I brought the skin uh, a little bit closer to magenta because it was leaning uh, you know, a little bit away from the skin tone indicator line. So I had my vector scope open for that. Okay, and pretty much what this is, is this is just creating more texture in the shot with power windows, okay? And then I have the outside node so I have a parallel parallels here and then outside nodes for each of them. So if I wanted to, I can adjust everything opposite of that specific power window. So for this one, it was a vignette. It's not like a vignette vignette, but it was just to uh, direct more focus on the face. It was a tiny adjustment And the next two and the next two was the tiniest adjustment to the right side of her face because it, it seemed a little too bright. So I just wanted to focus in on that. And this one was just bringing some glow back to her left eye, just a small touch. And then I just added some adjustments after that. 
So I pretty much just kind of brought everything back in a little bit to make it more dramatic. It was kind of slipping away from me. All right, and then, um, so everything looks pretty neutral. It looks dramatic. It has a little bit of a look just because of the environment. And then right here is the look. Let's turn that on. And I pretty much just used the log wheels and the primary wheels. You could use your primary wheels, log wheels. You can use the film look creator. You can use Dehancer. Use what you will. And then I'm going to turn these last four on all together. And this is pretty much softening it up a bit. It was a little too sharp and digital looking. Halation. Come on. Who doesn't like halation? Nah, I, I didn't even put halation there. It was just there. Uh, grain. Grain. Give it some texture. And then a last vignette. Um, that is the workflow. Let's just go over it really quick. Noise reduction, CST, primary corrections right here, secondary corrections right here in a parallel structure, some texture with some power windows, um, and then outside nodes to accompany them, then some adjustments to kind of bring everything back to a dramatic sense, my look, and then my final touches right here. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.